guys, it's your girl T. So I want to come on here and talk about this story and it's coming from Outrageous Ass Ohio. I also want to shout out at Devin Presley. He was one of the first ones to let me know about this story that went viral on social media the other day. So what's going down is that we have a man named Brandon Clark and he decided to set down his eight-year-old son and in front of everybody, in front of the world, he decided to record himself. He had somebody else holding the camera, but he wanted to record himself letting his son know that the mother had died of a drug overdose. Then he proceeded to put this onto Facebook. So when he posted this on Facebook, this video went viral. Everybody named Mama's talking about it. He says that he put it on there because he's a recovering heroin addict himself. He's saying that he's 94 days clean. The mother um, who overdosed, she had not seen the boy in a year. And that he wanted to put this out there to warn other heroin addicts, you know what I'm saying, other drug users, what their drug abuse and their death could do to their children. This entire video is crazy. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip really quick. Check this out and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. One Youngstown man decided to record the moment he told his son that mom died, a moment he saw fit to post on Facebook. Catherine Bosley spoke with that father about his very controversial decision. Yeah, controversial for sure, but this dad, he is really sticking by his decision. He put that video up on Facebook for a very important reason and right now he says there's nothing anyone can say to make him rethink this. It is both heartbreaking and jaw-dropping to watch. That was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Brendan Bickerstaff Clark of Youngstown giving his son the worst news possible. Mom died last week. Almost incomprehensible for the eight-year-old. What do you mean, my mom? Yes. How? From drugs. <laughs> In fact, this father says his son's mom, who last saw her boy last year, died of a heroin overdose this weekend. And the motive behind recording and posting his son's reaction for the world to see is to drive home another reality of the epidemic. If you have kids and you love your kids, put your kids first. Go get help. Go get treatment so nobody has to tell your kids that you died from a drug overdose one day, like I had to do. Vickerstaff Clark um, talking to us via FaceTime is a recovering addict himself. Well, he got help, and now he has the cyber attention he never expected. Was, I'm not going to lie. I don't regret it. No, I don't. The video getting tens of millions of views, a mix of supporters and, well, haters, arguing he exploited his son. But he says his son is well aware of his parents' drug problems, knew he was being recorded here for some reason. Have a and after watching the video together, Dad says they talked about it and his son agreed to share it and understood why. I just figured if I could help save at least one life, make one difference, I figured it would be worth it. All right, you might notice, although the little boy is very identifiable on the internet, we decided to blur his face. His dad says he's actually doing well now, but while his dad is still recovering, only 96 days clean himself, the boy is in grandma's custody. Catherine, I have to say, this is really upsetting to me A because, uh, you know, aside what the dad says we can see with our own eyes how broken up this child is and this child is a is a kid he doesn't have a say in what his father does with this video so does the dad realize that now that this is out there, it's out there for the world to see and it could have damaging right. effects on the son? Well, he seems to understand that, and that's that's the big point of it, he says, actually. As much as he wants to help others, he wants it to remind himself and his son how important it is to stay clear of drugs for the rest of their lives. We're all a little jaded in this business. Yeah. We all second guess a lot of what we see out there. Are there are questions about validity on this video in general. Yeah, some people are saying they've watched it and it seems like maybe it was kind of planned, but mm -hmm. um, dad says absolutely not that this really happened the way it happened in, in real time. And um, you know, you have to watch it yourself to probably to get a feel of why people are thinking maybe this was a bit staged. Still, um, there is quite a message in this, and it is um, going to be quite the controversy and the debate for, for time to come because, yeah. I mean, it is going hugely, hugely viral, which says a lot about how huge this yeah. issue is, not just here, but around the country. All right, let's get over to uh, Dan DeRose. He's at the Answer Center with a social media reaction to this. Dan? Really looking at some of the numbers behind this in the Answer Center. We saw this when we started to see the videos of people ODing that people were taking, and there was outrage then that it was too much. Now we're getting the 
the next step of this when somebody ODs and dies. We've got the post itself uh, pulled up here. I want you to take a look at this. 27 million views in just two days. That is incredible when it comes to the internet. 650,000 shares, so more than a half a million shares. And when we look at the comments, uh, about 87,000 comments here. And like uh, Kathleen, uh, Catherine was saying is that they are all over the place. The comments, uh, we get this comment from Jacqueline, stupid parents, I hate those drugs that suck them in and takes them away. Thank you so much for sharing this. Maybe some parents will wake up. And while that is one side of it, there is obviously the other side of it who wonder if this was the right thing to do. Coming up at five, we're going to use the answer center to go through that argument. Will this help? Is it counterproductive? Is it too much? Is it sensationalist? And we're going to have you answer that question for yourself. Getting answers in the Answer Center, Dan Rose, back to you. All right, so you guys just watched the news clip. So first I want to say this. It's been a huge hair on epidemic out here. I've covered it on both of my channels. If you guys are not subscribed to Lovely T 2002 subscribe to that channel because I talk about viral stories over there as well. Just about a month ago, I talked about a story that went down in Ohio again where you had a couple, they were in a van basically overdosing while the foyer was there. They would just stop at a stop sign, pass the hell out. That story went viral. I talked about that. And then most recently, I was also sent another story just the other day about a couple. Um, they had overdosed in their home. And basically, their seven-year-old daughter went to school and said, you know, she thought something was wrong with her parents. And then finally, the school caught the police and they went over there and they found the couple dead. And they had a bunch of small children in the home. The home was just in filth. This story was just really, really sad. It just broke my heart. But like I stated on my other channel, they're definitely handling this situation differently. When it comes to white people being addicted to drugs, they're treating this as, you know, rehabilitation, trying to get them treatment. They're not criminalizing it as much. But when black folks was addicted to crack and stuff like that in the 80s you know they were sending junkies and the dealers straight to prison so it's very interesting to see how the united states and society in general is handling this heroin epidemic when it comes to this affecting white families you know so it's really really sad a lot of people are very much mixed about what this father did and you know him blasting this and putting this on social media i want you guys to go ahead and check out some of these comments these tweets and what folks are saying about this video Check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. All right, so you guys just saw the comments and what folks had to say. You know, my opinion is this, you know, it broke my heart to sit there and watch that little boy find out that his mother was dead. I feel like at the end of the day, he shouldn't have posted this on social media. This is not the world's business. Reality is reality. You know what I'm saying? If somebody wants to stop doing drugs, if somebody wants to get help, they'll eventually do that. Him posting this video may wake some people up, but most likely some people be so caught up in their drug addiction. You could film this woman on the street dying for her last breath and they'll still go out and take a hit. You know what I'm saying? I just don't feel like this was everybody's business. It reminded me when I had to sit my kids down when my um, youngest son, he was in kindergarten and my oldest was like in fourth grade at the time. We had just moved back to Minnesota. And their big cousin on their father's side, you know, he had really stepped up and he was trying to be kind of like a father figure to them. You know, my youngest son um, was staying with his family at the time. So they were always helping me out because I didn't have a sitter. I couldn't afford daycare. So his mom, my mother-in-law um, and their big cousin would like just really look out for my son. And he only had daughters. So he always looked at my little son like his son. And he ended up getting murdered, okay? He got shot several times. It was just, it was really gruesome, very, very horrific. He got shot, and I'll never forget having to sit my boys down and tell them because my youngest son was just with them, like, not even two days before that. You know, he was at the house and spending time with the family and stuff like that. And I remember when I heard about it, it just, it broke my heart because I'm like, how do I tell these kids that their big cousin that they just gotten attached to, you know, we've been back in Minnesota for about maybe like seven, eight months, you know, how do I tell them that this man has been killed, you know, and in such a horrific way. 
And I remember I was getting closer and closer to the front row, and I'm like, you know, I had to sit down and let these boys know. You know, and I remember sitting them down in the kitchen table and letting them know that their cousin was shot and killed, and he's not coming back. And to watch my five-year-old son break down, I mean, to watch both of them, they instantly were in tears, you know, broke down, wanted to know why. I mean, they just... They took it so hard, you know, as if it was their father, as if it was me, you know, they, they took it so hard. Children take things like that very hard. I could not imagine putting that intimate moment with my boys on Facebook for the world to see. You know, now my boy's a little bit older. That kindergartner is now a fifth grader and that fourth grader is now, you know, a sophomore in high school. And, you know, imagine putting that on, on Facebook for the world to see and then them looking back on that on social media. I just don't think that that's cool. I think certain things need to be kept private. Certain things need to be intimate. That's something I will never forget. That's something that has stayed with me to this day, just having to break that news to them and seeing their faces. Like, it got me wanting to cry even thinking about it. And he's been dead now for, like, you know, going on, like, four or five years, you know. But just having to tell them that and then having to deal with the whole funeral process and everything else, and that was just a big cousin. Imagine with this little boy, this is his mother and a mother that he hadn't seen in a year because she chose drugs over him. I just feel so bad for that little boy. My heart definitely went out to him. But, you know, I understand what the father was trying to do, but I just feel like it wasn't needed. If he really wanted to, you know, wake people up, he should have got on camera and talked about it from his point of view about him losing his baby's mother to, you know, drug addiction and how he's trying to keep his life clean and sober. He should have talked about it. He didn't need to include his son. That was a private moment between a son and a father and a child finding out that his mother is no more. I don't think that the world needed to see that. So I understand why people are very much conflicted. You know, like I said, I understand what he's trying to do. I understand what he was trying to convey. But I feel like he didn't need to sacrifice his son to convey that message. You know, but that's just my opinion. It just took me back to flashbacks of me having to sit my kids down and tell them that they lost their cousin. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire outrageous situation coming from Outrageous Ass Ohio. How do you feel about the father and what he did? Do you agree with what he did? Do you feel like, you know, he needed to put this on camera to let the world know about the dangers of heroin and, you know, potentially overdosing and never seeing your kids again? Or do you feel like he just did this for attention and he shouldn't have put this on social media because now this is something that will always be tied to his son? And then also, how do you feel about the heroin epidemic just literally getting out of control out here? You know what I'm saying? This is just what it is. And I understand people pronounce heroin differently. That's how I pronounce it. If you pronounce it a different way, that's how you pronounce it. But that's what I was raised in the 90s and that's what people called it where I was from. So I don't know. But anyhow, how do you feel about this epidemic and how bad it's affecting the white community? And do you find it interesting how it's being dealt with in the media, how, you know, they're pushing treatment and rehabilitation. But when black folks were going through their drug epidemic in the 80s, you know, it was just straight up jail time. It wasn't about rehabilitation. It was, you know, getting them off the street, lock these people up. You know, we had the whole Say No to Drugs initiative by Ronald Reagan. You know, I find it really interesting how this is being played out in the media. And this heroin epidemic is just being shown constantly. It's so many people's lives being affected by this. And it's really, really sad. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. All right, deuces. Hey, you guys, it's your girl, T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.